Hello there, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of Sunday Sauce. Uh, just a short devotional video that I like to do, try to do once a week. I uh, apologize last week. I wasn't able to, to make a video. We were ill. Uh, so and just a lot of things going on around the house uh, to actually film a video uh, with all the decluttering we were doing around the house. So I'm back uh, with one today, and thank you so much for joining me. Uh, today I'm going to be exploring uh, Numbers 13, basically. Um, I'm going to read a lot of text here, out of the Bible, of course. So just follow along with me, Numbers 13. I'll be reading a lot of the, the chapter um, on this, and then just kind of a little commentary on it uh, as I go. And we'll see where that brings us. Exploring Canaan is kind of the, the title. The Lord said to Moses, Send some men to explore the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the Israelites. From each ancestral tribe, send one of its leaders. So at the Lord's command, Moses sent them out from the desert of Paran. All of these were leaders of the Israelites. Then it goes on in verse 4 through 15, just to list all of the leaders' names and the tribes that they came from, which I'm not going to read all those, but I think it's very important. I like how the, a lot of times in the Bible they did list that because that is a lot of archaeological evidence that you can go through and study to prove that the Bible is correct, what it says. So in verse 17, we'll jump down to it. It says, when Moses sent them to explore Canaan, he said, go out through Negev and on the hill country. See what the land is like and whether the people who live there are strong or weak, few or many. What kind of land do they live in? Is it good or bad? What kind of towns do they live in? Are they unwalled or fortified? How is the soil? Is it fertile or poor? Are there trees on it or not? Do your best to bring back some of the fruit of the land. And then quotations. It was the reason for the first ripe grapes. It was the season for the first ripe grapes. So they went up and explored the land from the desert of Zin as far as Rehob, towards Lebo, Hermath. They went up through Negev and came to Hebron, where Ahiman, Shishiah, and Talmai, the descendants of Anak, lived. When they reached the valley of Eshel, they cut off a branch bearing a single cluster of grapes. Two of them carried it on a pole between them, along with some pomegranate and figs. That place was called the Valley of Eschol because of the cluster of grapes the Israelites cut off there. At the end of 40 days, they returned from exploring the land. So they went and explored, and we'll kind of see what they, they have to say when they come back. In verse 20, it's kind of the subtitle report on the exploration. They came back to Moses and Aaron and the whole Israelite community at Kadesh in the desert of Paran. There they reported to them, and the whole assembly showed them the fruit of the land. They gave Moses this account. We went into the land to which you sent us, and it does flow with milk and honey. Here is its fruit. But the people who live there are powerful, and the cities are fortified and very large. We even saw descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites live in Negev, the Hittites, Jebusites, and Amorites live in the hill country, and the Canaanites live near the sea along the Jordan. Then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, We should go up and take possession of the land, for we certainly can do it. But the men who had gone up with him said, We can't attack these people, they are stronger than we are as they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land they had explored. They said, The land we explored devours those living in it. All these people we saw there are great size. We saw Nephilim there, the descendants of Anak. We seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we looked the same to them. So I'll just kind of stop right there. Um, you know, the Lord promised them you know that land but they went there and and it was kind of a, a promised land um, the desert in a position to take possession of what God had promised 
Like I said, 12 of them went there, and the spies returned from spying out the land. And what this incident kind of reminds me of is a lot of times, kind of what we, kind of what we uh, face in our faith. Uh, God had called them to do that, and they rebelled because it looked like it might be too hard, uh, too scary, too you know just too difficult to do. You know, might have to sacrifice too much to to do what the God was calling them to do. Um, so that's a lot of what. I read in the scripture how it reads into my heart as it brings up times in my life when you know I clearly believe I heard God telling me things that I should do or things that I shouldn't do also and there was times that I listened and times I did not and the times that I listened there you know everything went really well uh, when I listened to God's voice and there, he always, no matter how impossible it seemed that I could do it or not do it, he told me to do it. I look at times when, you know, and I'm not a, a pastor of any means, taught in a school or anything like that, just kind of self-taught and among, you know, church taught, that kind of thing uh, in my life. And not my entire life, just kind of about half of my adult life here. And... There was times when, like I said, he told me to do things. And an example of that is when, uh, you know, the pastor at our church asked me, you know, could I fill in, you know, a couple Sundays a year and preach, you know, and, you know, and that's what he asked me to do. I'm like, oh, that's scary. I don't know if I could do that, you know, sit in front of the whole congregation and carry the whole sermon all the way through, including the prop and, you know, the, the topic. Uh, sometimes he gave a a topic or a series that he was going through and asked me to pick one. Um, but that was scary, but God somehow used me to be able to do that and used, uh, you know, not what I would call my giftings, I wouldn't think, but apparently it is uh, because he used me and, and my weakness to show his greatness. And there was other times, you know, like doing some funerals that I've done as well that like no way I could hold, you know, a whole funeral, you know, thing. You know, I, there's no way I could hold the whole service, you know. But I did uh, several different times, and he saw me through that as well. But there's other points in my life when I did not listen to him, and I, you know, regret those decisions to this day because many times when God asks you to do something, he wants you to do it right then right now he's 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 asking you to do that right then right now i mean he doesn't need somebody to sit there and think about it for a year he needs somebody to take action on that mainly who he's talking to which was was me and take action on it right then you know, i believe that's most of the time god calls us to take action on it right then sometimes it's something simple like you just feel a uh, an urge in yourself to give somebody a call and give them some words of encouragement. Maybe, you know, send a, a snail mail to them. Or maybe it's just a stranger on the street that you see in line at a grocery store and just saying, hey, you know, I, I, I'm going to pick up that, that uh, you know, tab form if you're able to. Um, there was a time recently that this happened to me that somebody listened to God's voice in their head. That was when uh, Crafty Jackie and, and Don were down. Uh, we were having a good Valentine's dinner and some personal stuff kind of went on you know, in our lives during that time. And Don just kind of said to me, he goes, do you think uh, you know, Lisa would mind if I, I prayed for that situation right now? You know, he could have, first time meeting us, he could have just said, just kind of listened to it and been done with it. But no, he's he listened to God and took action to pray for that situation. Uh, and it makes a world of difference when you bring that to God. And so I appreciated him listening to God at that point. And so those are just some examples uh, throughout my life that, you know, listening to God or not listening to God. And I'm sure you have many examples as well. So I'd love to hear them and so would other people. You know, just comment down below 
some of those examples that you have. Um, I seem to be getting a little long-winded in this one. I apologize for that, but I just uh, say what's on my mind, say what's on to God. I don't really worry too much about how long or short the video is. So let's take a moment now and just kind of pray a moment if we could. So um, I'm going to bow my head just because that's just how I pray. Um, so I will bow my head and, and say a prayer. Father, whatever challenges we face today, we're not alone. You are here. You lead us to a life of adventure and a life of risk. And keep us from being foolish, but keep us from being afraid as well. Help us to remember that with faith, we can do it with you. All things are possible. We just ask that you, you help us to remember these things that you you've asked us to do and not do in the past and just help us to listen to you now and in the future we praise you in your name amen so guys um, that's Sunday sauce this week once again thanks for joining um, you know and just hope this helped uh, kind of bright your Sunday and just to, to glorify God which that's what I'm doing it for is to to glorify him number one. So you guys have a great night and I uh, will talk to you later.